What's going on everyone? It's Alex here from Alex Physio. So today we're gonna to be chatting about three serious complications that can arise if you've had a rib fracture or fractures. Welcome. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Alexander Kravich. I'm a physiotherapist in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm gonna be chatting about three serious complications that you should be aware of if you've had a rib fracture or fractures. So let's get right into it. Number one is flail chest. So this is where you have broken three ribs and you have affected the overall structural integrity of the ribs. So flail chest is a serious matter, especially as you get older, because if the integrity of the chest wall is compromised, then this could lead to something called paradoxical breathing, where basically when you take an inhale, instead of your lungs expanding, your lungs are actually contracting. And when you're exhaling, they're expanding. So your the, the integrity of your chest wall is compromised, and this can lead to serious complications, especially if you're somebody who is older, and it is something that may require surgical intervention to improve or realign the structural integrity of the chest wall. So the more ribs that you break, the higher the likelihood that you have of having a flail chest. Number two is internal organ injuries. So depending on which rib fracture will affect which, if any, organs you have injured, especially based on the type of fracture and the nature of the trauma or impact that has occurred. So we're looking at three different organs. We're looking at our spleen, we're looking at our liver, and we're looking at our kidneys. So if we get an injury to some of these structures, then there are other signs or other systemic signs that may be evident as a result of this. And this is where immediate medical attention would be warranted, whether that be having an emergency CT scan, or sometimes they even do ultrasonographies, where they can not only look at the integrity of the chest wall, but to see if there's any soft tissue damage around there. So they can look for things such as internal bleeding, or if you have any other systemic signs like fevers, chills, shortness of breath, changes in the color of your urine, nausea, vomiting, things like that we're looking for, and that could indicate more serious internal organ injuries. Number three, number three is a pneumo or a hemothorax. A pneumothorax is known as a collapsed lung, and a hemothorax is classified as when there's blood in your, in the space between the lungs and the lining of the lungs. So these are matters that warrant immediate medical attention as well, because if you have a pneumothorax or a hemothorax, hemo for blood, pneumo for air, then this needs to be treated via usually a chest tube, where they would insert a chest tube into your abdominal area, trying to get rid of the blood that has collected inside of that space between your lungs and the lining of the lungs, called your parietal pleura. And we're trying to get rid of some of that blood to try to, you know, help with the function of the of the lungs to get it to return back to normal to get rid of, you know, the fluid that is in there that shouldn't be, of course, in there. And then with a pneumothorax or with a collapsed lung, then if your lung is like a bl balloon is basically deflating, if one of the ribs have punctured the lungs and now it's not able to do its job, so we have to try to get rid of some of that buildup of air or change the pressure that is in that area via the chest tube. And sometimes that chest tube is put on suction so that we can try to basically restore the pressure balance or the pressure gradient within the lung to help to return the lung to its optimal functioning position. So those are three things to be mindful of if you've had a rib fracture or fractures. Obviously, the more the fractures, the more likelihood that there are other complications and the mechanism of injury is going to play a role in terms of the severity and, and what are the expectations. And these risks are obviously heightened as you're older as well, because usually older people may have some past medical history that can augment or increase the likelihood of having complications. And depending on which ribs are broken and how they're broken, that can play a role in terms of the likelihood of having any other forms of injuries associated with that, which may require a longer hospital stay. So the three things that we looked at was the, the chance of a flail chest, the uh, possibility of damaging your internal organs, such as your liver, spleen, or kidneys. And then the third one was the presence of a pneumo or a hemothorax. Have you had a rib fracture? Let me know below what your story has been and, and, and what happened as a result and how your recovery has been going thus far. And if you've had any associated serious complications, such as the ones that I mentioned here, let me know what has been working and what hasn't with regards to recovery and how your overall experience has been at the hospital. 
If you find value in my content, consider checking out some of my other videos. I have a bunch of videos on rib fractures and rib injuries specifically, but also just I have over 450 videos on various physio, exercise, and medical related topics that you can check out. And if you still find value, please consider subscribing and clicking that subscribe button. It really allows my channel to grow and allows me to reach a wider audience. I'm always looking for ways to improve and to, a, a way to deliver my content. Um, and I would really appreciate your support if you do find value in what I'm posting. Until then, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.